So a few years back, I started writing these short science fiction stories, and then I thought, you know, maybe I could storyboard them and get some voice actors, because nobody's going to read something written by a rando, but they might watch a YouTube video. How you doing? But then all these delightful AI tools started to come along, and now it suddenly seems possible to animate those storyboards. Not that you couldn't have done this kind of thing before with Blender, Schmender, or Unreal 5, but I really enjoy making 2D art and you end up with, I think, a completely different aesthetic than if you would have just made everything in 3D. Now, I don't want to poop in anybody's macaroni here, but for me personally, I never really liked 3D animation all that much. At least it's sad that it's replaced hand-drawn animation when it comes to studio films, but the reason I never really liked it was because it's a little too perfect looking. Coming to... Marshall? Who gives a rat's ass? Because with 3D animation, you got a computer calculating every angle, every photon, every careless whisker. And you might say, eh, if you're using a computer and AI, well, what's the real difference? And you know what? There's not much difference except for the fact that these tools are brand new, that we're in the pioneer days, the frontier, the grand horizon, and that's where the really interesting and weird stuff tends to always happen. In 10 years, when everyone's using Adobe Video Shop to text a video and they've ironed out all the wonky and daring kinks, you're just gonna get a lot of the same stale, boring AI content getting churned out by Johnny TikToks and Lily, look at me! Even now, you're getting all these stupid little AI trends like Family Guy is an 80s sitcom or Breaking Bad is an 80s dark fantasy film. And it's fine, you know, it's the internet, everything gets memed or memified at some point. But... Okay, so here's the real truth. I ragged on it, but 3D animation's fine, like Photoshop or AI or any other tool. It comes down to what the individual artist can do with it more than it does anything else. And I'm sure you've probably seen this five-hour video about 3D animations based on a template, and if not, maybe skim through it. But you gotta understand, I've been using this stuff for over 20 years, since I was in high school, and back then it was mostly box modeling that somehow still took days to render. And look, here's a Facebook page for a game I was working on uh, that I abandoned some years ago, yet still has more likes and followers than the page for my actual software business that sells actual software. But the point is, I haven't really been keeping up with the technology changes or invested the amount of time into these software programs that you really need to to be able to uh, start generating cool stuff with them, and that's all on me. That's my shortcoming, so I apologize if I offended anybody. But what I like about this AI stuff, at least for the moment, is that I have no idea how I'm going to pull off each shot, and that keeps things kind of interesting. I'll be damned. Damned. To the ends of time. Sometimes I'm using EB Synth or a first order motion model or GFP GAN to up-res faces, stable diffusion, depth maps, sometimes all of them, and sometimes I'm just animating 2D generated images in DaVinci Resolve and compositing everything together. And often that's enough. It works fine if you only need motion on the X and Y axis. Other times I'm compositing video over rendered images or storyboards that I've made using tons of green screens and overlays, nodes and tricks in DaVinci Resolve to blend it all together. And all these AI tools are open source and free right now and that's the cool thing here. All you really gotta do is install Python, learn how all the command line scripts work and boom you got yourself a new tool on Saturday and a new one on Sunday. But if you're looking for a tutorial or workflow, there's uh, no such thing right now because we're making all this up as we go along, and that's the truly exciting part for me. Bingo. And there are limitations. You can't have too much motion going on, at least not yet, because everything is dependent on the data set that the models are trained on, but the potential is definitely there, and if I were made of money, I'd just build one or two more computers and be training my own models like 24-7 to do the things I need, but... I'm not made of money. I'm made of broken dreams and uh. So I might experiment a little more with 3D, you know, because you got all these cool AI tools like Image to 3D with PIF UHD and open source motion capture and all that kind of cool stuff, but. You still have to rig the models and tweak the little UV maps and futz around with the textures and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to a 2D image, a storyboard, it's more about the composition, the colors, the image itself. You know, films are just a series of images and sometimes I think filmmakers forget that and get enamored with things like camera movements. An action scene can be a nice little accent to your story, but when an entire film becomes an action scene, then it ceases to be a story. 
I think with all the limitations this AI tech imposes on artists, you're going to see some of the most creative people making some of the most creative things anybody's ever seen over the next couple of years. Now, whether or not any of that stuff finds an audience or anybody who watches it remains to be seen, but we'll all be out here trying. And again, limitation breeds creativity. Struggle breeds creativity. Mozart was a child prodigy, but to me, most of his music is boring as shit. Now take Beethoven. Beethoven had to struggle in his life, sometimes with every note, and you can hear that in the music. It makes it interesting, the struggle. And you can say the same thing about filmmaking or any creative endeavor, you know, when there's no struggle, there's really no point. And it all just becomes milk toast, whitewashed, uh, corduroy pants. Hello, Raymond. You feel a little more relaxed in your favorite Kmart clothes? Tell him, Ray. Kmart sucks.